Sheriff Phillips covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Has Russia and China a secret partnership in order to try to topple the U.S. military by means of dropping the U.S. dollar? That's a pretty provocative uh, actions there that China and Russia may very well be working on, according to one Kremlin advisor. Going to share that in just a moment with you. But just to remind you, this April the 24th today, but tomorrow, April the 25th, a big day. It is actually the 85th anniversary of the Korean People's Army, the beginning of their military itself, and it may be uh, celebrated by the testing of a nuclear weapon. Another test, that is, I believe it's the sixth test it will be if they actually carry this out. And of course, President Trump already vowing even the hint of testing this nuclear weapon could bring a very swift action by the United States and their allies. Of course, the allies in the region there would be Japan and, of course, South Korea. Japan very concerned as well about uh, North Korea's nuclear arsenal that they have been building up slowly, having also nuclear weapons on their submarines, the ability to be able to reach all the way to mainland uh, United States as well as even Australia from where they are. And yet at the same token, while we are looking at this, there has been a great concern uh, by China and Russia of the possibility of a grant of a uh, an actual invasion of the United States or an attack by the United States on North Korea so much so that as we have reported here on Israeli News Live the movement of Russian forces to the border of North Korea and even of course China China has been moving their troops and and different armaments there for quite some time the Donfang 41 an intercontinental ballistic missile was moved there uh, back in that region months ago last year, when in fact we were wondering if that was for the United States. But in, well, it still may be in the long run because China may very well be willing to protect North Korea according to their 1961 agreement that they actually signed with North Korea that they would come to their aid if any outside party ever attacked. And I'm sure military leaders in the United States are well aware of this. Now, China has been working with the United States to try to use diplomatic means and, of course, sanctions on North Korea in order to get Kim Jong-un to abandon his nuclear ambitions. But that may not work very well. And finally, uh, uh, Medev uh, Peskov, the uh, Russian president's uh, spokesman, said today, that the actions of the US, or the Russian military moving down towards North Korean border is not in, for the public domain. That lets us know that Russia is really not saying a whole lot about what they have moved down there or why they've moved it down there. Now, others have been speculating that both China and Russia have moved the troops as well as all this equipment, military equipment in the region there to deal with an onslaught of refugee crisis crossing the border when tens of thousands may end up crossing. Well, no doubt, maybe so. But when Russia goes to moving down the, uh, the air defense missile systems that they're sending down to North Korea's border, as well as China sending the S-300 systems to their border, it seems to me that China and Russia may be doing just a, a, a tad bit more because, believe me, the air defense missile system isn't going to stop human beings walking over the border, but it will stop bombs from falling down on North Korea. That seems to be what most military analysts should be concerned about and looking at. But this is not the big picture. That's only part of it. And as I said, the United States also moving the F-35A, the stealth fighters, to, the, to, to Estonia as well tomorrow. That's another big move. Is the United States, NATO, their allies getting ready that if indeed North Kim Jong-un makes a fatal move and the United States strikes North Korea and Russia and China get involved, that NATO may be ready to come to the aid of their NATO partner and make a strike on Moscow. Is this why we are seeing all of this movement going around? And if nothing does happen and things do settle down, it seems like China and Russia have Plan B already put planned and are, and, are, and are getting ready to put in an action. And that is the collapse of the U.S. dollar. Uh, title of the Russian article here that came out on April the 21st, Kremlin Advisor Reveals Cure for U.S. Aggression. 
uh, in the article here, and I'm going to read a much of this article. It's not very long, but I think it's important to read a lot of it. It says, the only way to stop U.S. aggression is to get rid of the dollar addiction, a Kremlin advisor said on Friday. That Kremlin advisor is Sergei Glazyev, and he said in the interview with TASS magazine, the more aggressive the Americans are, the sooner they will see the final collapse of the dollar, and by getting rid of the dollar, this would be the only way for victims of American aggression to stop this onslaught. As soon as we and China, that we being Russia, dump the dollar, it will be the end of U.S. military might. Well, he may be right about that. I don't share necessarily uh, the views that are being spoken here on TAS, uh, on the TASS interview here, but I think it's very important that we note what China and Russia are doing. They are plotting and planning the demise of the United States. Commenting on the policy of a new U.S. president, Glazyov noted that Donald Trump is doing what the ruling elite expects him to do. Thought that was interesting as well. As we shared with you here on Israeli News Live just recently, all the former presidents that have talked about a shadow government, all the way from uh, George Washington, the first president, Jefferson, uh, Harry Truman, Eisenhower, all the different ones speaking about a shadow government. And as I stated, it doesn't seem that President Donald Trump is really the man running the nation. I do believe that he runs certain sections of it. I do believe that there is uh, a part of, of the U.S. government that the president actually runs. But that elite class is the ones that really call the shots and determine what's actually going to be done. As the Sergei Glazyov states, the Kremlin advisor. But this is what he stated also, a very interesting comment, especially this next comment. I had no illusions about him, speaking about President Donald Trump, regarding any change in policy. And that's kind of interesting. We'll get into that in just a moment. First, American aggression around the world is rooted in its aspiration to preserve U.S. hegemony when they have already yielded economic leadership to China. Now that's what's interesting when he says, I had no illusion about him, regarding any change in policy. Well, what was the policy that President Donald Trump swore he would do on the campaign trail? He was going to make China bring back all the American businesses there and make them be more fair when dealing with the United States. So as he says here, I had no illusions about him regarding any change in policy. He knew good and well that President Trump was not going to make China bring anything back. If anything, we've seen that begin to happen when President Trump was using President Xi Jinping there as he was inside of Florida and, and, and President Donald Trump, after only three days of the chemical attack, uh, authorizes the launch of 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles on, on Syria there to try to uh, pay back President Bashar al-Assad for the alleged chemical attack that he was blamed for. I thought that was a very rapid response if you ask me. Especially with no investigation and Russia definitely not allowed to be even a part of the investigation since all of this has already happened. But the thing is he did this, and at that time, he would not even address any of the issues over trade relations with the Chinese president. And as he put it to the American public, he says, why would I even bring this up when I'm trying to get him to deal with a greater problem that we were facing, a greater threat, which is Kim Jong-un? And I do agree. President Xi was, is and was working to try to bring President, or excuse me, Kim Jong Un, the dictator of North Korea, into submission by bringing or by forcing these sanctions on him. But make no mistake about it, China has 1961 an acting military agreement with North Korea. Yes, sanctions. No doubt they may work with the United States on the sanctions. After all, the United States has a huge debt with China, and I'm sure they'd like to get their money back. But then again, the United States has already signed over a lot of the U.S. land and banks and housing and everything else over to China as collateral. Thank you, President Barack Hussein Obama. You made sure they got their collateral in the event that we can't pay our debt. Well, I guess they just come and confiscate it. Maybe this is why Ivanka Trump is actually taking and having her children learn the Mandarin language. Are they anticipating a Chinese occupation of the United States? Well, one thing's for sure, China and Russia 
are certainly planning on something to be able to stop the military might of the United States. Will it work? I don't know. But so many of us already have been believing for a long time that there is definitely coming a collapse to the U.S. economy. I pray that it's not anytime soon. For the sake of the American people, ourselves, many others around the world, it will be a global effect too, by the way, friends. It won't just be the United States. It'll be everywhere. It'll affect the entire globe. But as he states here, the United States had, has no tools to make all other use of the dollar other than a truncheon. That is why they are indulging in a hybrid war with the entire world to shift their debt burden onto other countries to confine everyone to the dollar and weaken territories they cannot control. This is why China and Russia are making their move. And according to one article I read earlier before coming to this article here, they said Russia has already made that move. Is China going to be next? And of course, North Korea could be the very sign of what would make China drop the U.S. dollar. If we strike their ally, China may drop the U.S. dollar. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for supporting this broadcast. And if you would like to be a contributor to help this broadcast stay on the air on our YouTube channel, just above the subscribe button, you can donate there or on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Thank you and blessings to you.